what is executive functioning? Executive function is one of these broad umbrella concepts um, because it's defined behaviorally in terms of what it is that people do. What number comes after the number 10? It requires being able to keep information on mind. 11. Being able to remember the particular context, being able to think flexibly, and it requires being able to inhibit a tendency to do what one has done before. Executive functions are what you need when you have to concentrate, when things are difficult, when things are, when things are changing. If you look at what predicts how well children will do later in school, more and more evidence is showing that executive functions actually predict success better than IQ tests first termed as a central executive by Badley and Hitch in 1974, and later described by Lezak in 1983 as the part of human behavior that deals with how behavior is conveyed. Executive functioning is conceptualized as four components. These components are necessary to become socially responsible and an effective adult. The four components include the abilities of goal formation, planning, carrying out goal-directed plans, and effective performance. Vanich defined it as a practice that guides behavior toward a goal, especially in situations that are out of the normal routine. Vanich listed various functions such as prioritizing and sequencing behavior, knowing what duty or information is most needed, and blocking information or tasks that are distracting as executive functioning abilities. He also listed abilities such as shifting between task goals, using important information to make decisions, and handling new or changing information. To oversimplify things, executive functioning is like the CEO of the brain. Does your child have difficulty with the following? Keeping track of time, analyzing ideas, making plans, completing work on time, multitasking, applying information they learn to solve problems, or seeking help or information when needed? If so, they may have executive functioning difficulties. You may be asking yourself, how can I find out if my child has executive functioning problems? Well, that is a burning question. There are some informal screening measures, such as the ones listed below, that you can obtain from the counselor or the diagnostician at your child's campus to determine whether they are struggling with executive functioning issues. Eklin, Goldstein, and Mather stated that since executive functioning are part of metacognition, or thinking about your thinking, that it correlates with the student's ability to problem solve. Therefore, instruction and intervention should focus on improving problem-solving strategies. They also shared that the instructional strategy should include, number one, teaching students to become active learners, number two, helping students evaluate the effectiveness of a strategy, and number three, determining ways to modify the strategy in different settings. Click below to read an article about a day in the life of a child with executive functioning issues. It is important for us to understand how this impacts the student outside academics and education. Now that you know about executive functioning and how it impacts your child, I've included some resources for your reading pleasure. Just click on the images and each one will provide a unique aspect and additional information on executive functioning. Happy reading!